Uh, my name is Jeff Heinen. Let me introduce myself real quick. Uh, I am the field product specialist. I'm the agronomist for, uh, for Climate Field View. So I work with uh, uh, a lot of our research trials in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, all the way to the East Coast. Next week I'll be in Maryland talking to a bunch of farmers out on the, uh, out on the East Coast. So I've been uh, with uh, the company, with Bayer, Monsanto Climate, for about 23 years or so. But what I tell most folks is what I really am is a farmer. So my brothers and I farm a little over 2,000 acres just west of Fort Wayne, Indiana. This year we farm considerably less than 2,000 acres just west of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, we ended up, we put our first... So let's start out. Can you guys hear me all right? Tell it to whoever that is, shut it off. <laughs> good, good, good. No, no, no. We heard you out there. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. They're on the same channel. Well, a lot of these are all on the same channel, and so they're 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 going in and out. So, so my son told me a joke earlier uh, yesterday. So I got I got to share this one. He said, "Dad, there's uh there's these guys. They went to the farmers market. One guy walks into the farmers market. He sees a sign." Sign says lobster tails, two dollars. He's like, holy crap, lobster tail. So he goes over, gives the guy two dollars, and the guy goes, Once upon a time there was a lobster. Does everybody get that. All right, start them off right. That's the way you that's the way you do it around here. So I'm gonna share with you some of the ways I use some of this high-tech stuff on my own farm, uh, how you can use it to help you make decisions. Uh, because at the end of the day, I mean, I heard the guy under the tent talking about how we save money, right? And so we end up spending money on t high tech stuff. And if we, it doesn't give me a return, right, on my own farm, your farm, then it doesn't do me any good. And that's the key to it is how do I use it to help make a decision, decide on a product? How do I, you know, get more efficient in, uh, in what I'm doing on my own farm? This is a chart. I don't know if everybody can see it, but this is from the University of Illinois. These are the drivers of corn yield. And so they looked at data over many years and pulled out after year after year after year what percentage of each of these things has an end driver of your eventual corn yield you had. Guess what number one is? Weather, right? This year some of my corn yield be zero. So the weather didn't do me a whole lot of good there. But I can't control that. Of everything else that I can control right there, number two is nitrogen. 26 percent. Number three, hybrid selection. Hybrid selection, things like plant population, these are all things we can control and they are things that can help us increase profitability if we use technology to help us with that decision making, right? And so we've got new algorithms coming out to help us with things like hybrid selection. We already have variable rate seeding to help us with our seeding rates and get that population right on a particular field. What we like to say uh, at climate is every pass matters. So literally every time we pull into one of our fields, I want to map it. I want a record of it. Doesn't matter whether it's tillage, whether it's spraying, whatever it might be, because every one of those passes can have an impact on yield. And at the end of the day, I want to find out which ones are the ones that are pushing my yield up the most. I want to be able to, to you know, encourage those different functionalities. So we've got all these layers of data that you collect, I collect. You may not even know that you're collecting data and you're collecting some of these data layers. What do I do with all those layers? The nice thing is that some uh, systems, and FieldView is one of those, where I can get all those data layers in one spot, where I can at least look at them uh, and do some things with that data. And what that does for me is it turns everything I do now on my farm into a test plot. And so I can, I can go through and I can look at everything I'm doing and I'll show you some examples of, uh, of how I look at that. I have several test plots on my, uh, on my farm. I track them all in field view. At the end of the day, I want to know each one of these hybrids and I want to know how they reacted over the hills and down in the hollows because they will be different. And if I had this where I could show you where I could cut out a region report, this is a hill right here. And if I was to cut that out right there, what you're going to see is you're going to see about a 60 bushel difference for me between my bottom ground and my upper ground. And it's worse down here. I'm in northern Indiana. We are significantly flatter than what you guys are, right? And so I want to know if one hybrid kicks butt down here in the bottom and it doesn't do so well up here, I want to know that. And I have to be able to have my data in here to be able to do that evaluation. So now I can pick the right hybrid. 
and I can let my seed guys, they understand this too. The guys at Superior, they're going to look at all these plots and they're going to say, look, these are the way these hybrids are performing. And they know that because they're getting the data. And the more data we get in from all of you guys, we look at it, the better we get at selecting these hybrids. Then we look at things like split planter trials. So I've got a neighbor that sells some go-go uh, -go juice for, uh, for soybeans, right? I, he calls it biodyne or something like that. Anybody have somebody drive in the driveway and say, hey, put this stuff on your beans, it's going to kick your yield up five bushel. So now what I do is I track this stuff in field view so that I can figure that out on my own farm, right? So what I did a year ago, he came and said, hey, I'd like to treat all your beans. And I'm like, no way are you treating all my beans with this stuff. So I treated two boxes. Uh, my bean planter is a Kinsey planter, and I've got, I put one box of treated beans in one side and one box of untreated beans in the other side, and I ran it. And when I got done, I harvested that field right there. In field view, I can do this region report where I can pull that yield date out and take a look at it. And so you look at this, that's about a 40 acre field. I've got this green variety that's untreated, went 50 bushel. The treated variety went 50 bushel. I did this two years in a row, had the exact same result. How much of that you think I bought this year? Anybody want to take a wild guess? That would be zero, right? So I can look at seed treatments. I've had other seed treatments that I've put out here where I see a real nice gain from that. But in this particular case, on my own farm, my own planting conditions, I look at that data and it says that this is not making me any money. And so I need to make a decision there, and my decision is I'm not going to treat my beans with this stuff, right? And so those are kind of some of the things. Replant. Anybody love to replant? I despise replanting, right? So when you track replants in here, one, I want to know what my replant did versus what my first plant did. This is a field from, from a year ago where we were really wet also in the spring, and we went through, and I redrove that whole field. You see all these little blue marks. I don't know if everybody can see that. That's where I dropped the planter down, picked it back up. Anybody else ever do that? I hate it. So I put that, and I, I put my auto steer on because I run that technology too, and I'm going down the row, and then I sit there with my finger on the little up down button, and I'm looking at it, and I go right about here. You put it down. Then you go, ah, oh, that's getting better, getting better. I pick it back up. So the, the person, the data that's making the decision on that is my eye. My eye is different than your eye. So one, I want to be able to track it because that data is important to me. And two, I think that our technology providers should give me some way to help me make that decision in the cab so I don't have to do it. Because by the time I get over here, I'm putting it down and picking it up different than I did over here because I'm tired and I'm unhappy. The more I drive bad corn, the more unhappy I get, right? So that's one of the ways that you, we look at that. Variable rate seeding. So this is a variable rate seeding map. This is about a, a 52 acre piece of mine. We don't plant anything on our farm unless it's variable rate. We use uh, FieldView's advanced scripts to do that, which pulls out uh, you know, all of your past yield history. It pulls out imagery, uses satellite imagery to build scripts like that. So I know where my good ground is here, and I know where my crappy ground is. Every one of you guys that farm know that. My grandfather knew that, right? You go down, you go, you, you know yield's going to come up when you come into a certain spot. It just, you know, we farm these fields for a long time and we know that. What we found on our farm is that when we started implementing variable rate seeding, we kicked our yield up about seven, a little over seven bushel. So it wasn't a huge windfall. You're not going to get 14 bushel just by planting it that way. But here, with some of the variability that you have, you're going to see big differences by planting variable rate. Today on our farm, we won't plant a single field without planting a variable rate script. Won't happen. Because I can document. So you, you think about, I go back to listening to the speaker under the tent. He's looked, those small gains, right? That's a small gain. So over the years, if I can gain seven bushel over my neighbor and gain that year after year after year, guess what? My profitability is going higher than him. And so things change on my operation based on that. Little, little things like variable rate seeding will do that for you. I put all my soil samples in field view. We grid soil sample every other year. We probably wouldn't have to do that. But again, I want all my data in one place, and that's what field view does me. And so I can get my grid soil samples in there. I load it in. Because then, if I want to, I can go scout that. And I'll show you some scouting here in a little bit. But 
I can look at high pH spots or low pH spots and I can walk out there with an iPad and I can go to that spot and I can assess that because I've got the technology on my, on my iPad. That's the other thing that FieldView gets, gets me for that. Drone imagery. I saw a drone flying around. I don't own my own drone. I tried to tell my wife that I need one of these things. It's a farm expense. Anybody ever do that farm expense <laughs> thing with their wife? And uh, she says, no, you just want to play with a toy. And so, but what I do is I have my local retailer. I don't know if the guys at Superior uh, run drones. You guys run drones? So I go to my local ag retailer. They fly a drone for me. They use Drone Deploy. They can link that right to my FieldView account, and boom, I've got my drone images in here. You can see this field right here is a wet mess. I tell people, that field right there has got pattern tile. I just have absolutely no clue what the pattern is. Because I've been out there digging around. Anybody try to probe tile? And then you probe, and you probe, and you can't find a damn tile. The best probe I got is called a backhoe. You go out there, and you dig, and then you hit a tile, and I found that thing. So then I can work on it. That's what happens with drone imagery. I can start to pick some of those things out and look at that. Satellite imagery. Satellite imagery is beneficial for us for scouting. It also shows us different things in a field, right? So I get, because I've got all my fields in field view, I get satellite imagery on those fields. Basically, like every three, four days, it seems like I'm getting an image on a particular field. It comes right to my phone. I can tap on that. It takes me right into my field view app, takes me to a field, and lets me look and see if there's anything going on out there. I get two types of images. I get a scouting map, which is red, green, and yellow. I want to concentrate on the reds. Green is good. Red is bad. I want to look at those red spots and try to determine, do I need to go out and look at those? Is, are there bug problems happening? Do I need to go out and spray a fungicide? I want to know what's happening in those red spots so I can go out. What I really look for is if I go back, I want to look at, over time, what happens with those images and see if those red spots are getting bigger or if they're shrinking. And that's, that gives me some indication too. We also have a vegetation map, which this map, as your crop gets greener, it gets greener. And so you're going to see how different spots, I can tell you one thing, when you see certain spots that get green really fast, it ain't the crop, it's giant ragweed on my farm. And so I need to go out there and look at some of that. We call that, I don't know if you guys have a bunch of giant rag down here, we call that the state tree in northern Indiana because it gets enormous in size. And then for scouting, so I'm getting old and I like this thing to help me with my scouting because I don't want to walk a bunch of these fields anymore, I'm too old for that. So this is a field of my research that I was looking at. This is over by Plymouth, Indiana. So this is a variable seeding right here, 170 acres. I'm like, man, I don't want to walk 170 acres. I would rather do road scouting. So you do road scouting at 50 mile an hour or so, that field looks really good, really good. So then I pulled up the imagery on it and I said, you know what, I got some red spots out here and some green spots. So I pulled here, this is US 30, I pulled there, parked my truck and said, I'm going to scout, so I'm going to make a loop like that. So I start walking through there, and I walk out to that little red spot, if you can see it there, that little red spot, drown out spot, no corn. So the, the, the imagery that gets provided, it shows the good spots, the bad spots. I go to the green spot there, and you'll see corn looks pretty darn good. And so you can use this thing to scout, uh, help you diagnose things that may be happening in a field and if it can save me from some significant bug damage or something like that That is going to make me some money at the end of the day I have a question. Yep How often are you supposed to get that scouting report on your imagery on the satellite? So we don't own our own satellites. I wish we did but so we rely on a, a third-party provider for those so if we have a day like today that's nice and clear then you'll get a scouting image we we try to get you a scouting image once every seven days. So I tell guys once a week, but sometimes with clouds and rain and things like that, they don't come that My often. My last one's May 6th. May 6th? Okay, Leanne, you need to talk yeah. to. <laughs> I need to see. I'll see yeah. you Friday. Yeah. So the other thing with pins, so now when I'm scouting, I can drop a GPS pin, right? All my tile lines, I drop GPS pins on. My connection points for tile, I drop GPS pins on. Once they're in here, I can set those up as a permanent pin. They'll be there forever and ever and ever. I can get that on my phone. Wherever. So now when I go out to probe, I should be able to just carry my phone or my iPad and get pretty close to where that tile's at. 
still have to probe it to find out where it's at, etc. Pins are interesting because I tell people uh, you can drop them at any time. We plant with a, uh, a 1770 NT with precision planting stuff in it and everything, and we've got our iPad up there, and there's a little button that says drop pin. I was out talking to a group of farmers here a couple years ago. I pulled up my brother planting. I see pins all over this field, right? So I called him, and I said, hey, what the heck are all these pins? He goes, those are rocks. You guys have rocks? We have rocks. So I called him and I said, okay, dude, I said, uh, for every one of these pins you drop on a rock, you got to go out and you got to pick it up, right, at the end of the day. Guess how many more pins I got the rest of the day? <laughs> that would be zero, right? Keep going back to that, that zero. But I can drop these pins. If there's something that I don't know, if there's a bug, right, and I have no clue what that bug is, I can drop that pin, I can tap on a button here, and I can text that to my guys at Superior and say, what the heck is this bug and should I spray it? And so now it makes me way more efficient in trying to figure out what I need to do from a management standpoint to, to keep things going. Spraying. Spraying is very important. With a field view drive or even uploading data from a John Deere controller or a Ag Leader controller, whatever it might be, I can now track my spray applications in here. Very important for me. At the end of the day, when I'm done spraying, I get a spray report. So just like planting, I get this map. And I want this primarily for me, I've got a field view drive and an Apache sprayer. I, I, I want this for record keeping. A year ago, I had a neighbor, kind of a cranky neighbor. He said I drifted this thing called dicamba onto his beans. And I told him he was wrong. I did not do that. And so I had all my records here, everything there. With the, with the spray records, I can tell you when I started, when I stopped. I can tell you what sprayed, what my license number is. I can tell you the weather data when I started spraying, when I stopped spraying, got everything right there in one spot. And so now I can, it's easy for me to track my spray applications and know exactly what went on. I can also, so I've been spraying fungicide. I don't know, uh, you guys have, I, I know soybeans down here have been sprayed a lot. You guys get frog eye, I don't get frog eye. And please don't send me any frog eye because I don't need that on my beans. But I've been spraying beans with Delaro. And I've been leaving gaps so that I've got a real nice check strip to be able to check and see how many bushels I'm gaining with the laurel. So you look at, this is a, uh, a field that a friend of mine sent me. This is a, the uh, corn yield that came off of this field. This is his spray coverage map. And he left a uh, unsprayed strip right down the middle of that with his corn. When we draw a region report around that in field view, you can see that the unsprayed portion was about nine acres, went 202 bushel. The sprayed portion of that went 216. So now you sit there and you go, okay, there's a significant difference there that brings the value of that fungicide for me. And then the other side of that, if I go back, when you look at, there were two hybrids in that strip. So he had DeKalb 6067 and 6208. So you can tell this was from a couple years ago because I don't plant 6208 anymore. But you look at it right over here, 6067 went 214. 6208 went 200 unsprayed. Sprayed, 6067 only jumped up to 217, where 6208 went to 215, picked up 15 bushels. One of those hybrids responds to fungicide and the other one doesn't. And so you can start to pull those kind of things out with your data. If I'm trying to look at costs, right, and we start talking of doing that, if I've got 6067 out here and I have limited funds for fungicide, I'm not spraying it. I'm going to spray 6208 on every acre. And so it's, we need to pull that kind of information out. And that's, again, where the guys from Superior can help you make those decisions, too, because these hybrids are going to respond differently. Then you look at field health imagery. This is a fungicide application on a field health image. And you can see this red part, and you can see the green part where it was sprayed. So the interesting thing, and this came from Chad Dow, and some of you might know him. But they went out and they pulled these, uh, they put uh, temperature gauges under there. So you look at a corn crop, and here is where you're in the green where it was sprayed with fungicide. At 630, it was 59 degrees in the canopy. At 930, it was 75. On the unsprayed portion, it was 62, and by afternoon, it was 83 degrees in that canopy. So little things like that, we can, we can easily pick out by having that data in our hand. New things coming. So this is a sprayer mounted weather station. So now you start looking at little things like this where you've got a Bluetooth weather station that's gonna go and send that data directly to a field view drive 
right from your sprayer and it gives you a map that looks like this. And so now you get, instead of just like a population map or a spray coverage map, I now have a wind map. And I can tell where, what direction and what that wind looked like. So this is something that's coming. It's not available yet, but uh, we hope to have that available within the FieldView platform very soon. Looks like that. So I tell people, one thing is, is you have to watch around power lines and things like that. There's like telescoping. We're, we're testing these telescoping things or maybe a fold down option or something like that because it's supposed to be at a certain height above there. And I know that I run under some power lines where that would probably get pruned right off the top of my sprayer. So. Well, if you can do all that, you ought to have a sensor on it. It senses something that lowers down its own. That's true. I should. <laughs> but I'm spraying fast and it might, it might not hit there. But um, Tillage. Anybody track their tillage? So I track my tillage now. I keep an iPad in the cab. I've got, uh, this, is a, an, uh, this is right here, is an 8285R. Uh, pulling a uh, Brent disc ripper. So I run that Brent disc ripper not on every field, but I run it on a few fields in the fall that really need it. And it, I know for a fact it takes a little over two gallons of fuel for me to run that. So am I running that as recreational or is it making me any money? So if I go back here and I track that tillage in field view, this is that same field I showed you before. This is where <laughs> I put in some tile, so take that out. But I left an untilled strip right down the middle of that. That was a year ago. When I harvested that, and I don't have the harvest data in here, I picked up about eight bushel by tilling that field over no-till in that strip. And I like no-till, minimum till, but there are times in some of our tight soils where it pays us to go through there with a, a ripper or some, or some tillage. Last thing I'll go through are some new technologies here real quick. I got 20 seconds, right, according to the timer. So we have a thing called Field Catcher. We are using facial recognition software now to help identify bugs and diseases and things like that. If you go through an airport, right, and you have a picture taken of your face to determine whether you're a terrorist or not, right, they have this huge database with millions of faces in there, and that's how they determine that. We actually have a recognition software now for bugs and diseases and things like that. And so I can open up this Field Catcher app, I can go out into a field, and if I don't know what I'm looking at, Right? I can put that on there and it will help me determine what, it'll tell me what the recognition of that particular disease is or exactly what I'm looking at. I tell guys, I'm trained as a weed scientist. Right? <laughs> I can tell you that Amaranthus retroflexus is red root pigweed and I can tell you what to spray, how to kill it. I was with a friend of mine in a field a year ago and we're walking through and he peeled an ear back and there's a worm on the tip of the ear that's eating on that, that ear. I'm the expert, right? So he goes, what's that? And I said, that, sir, is a worm. <laughs> because I am not a bug man. And if I had some software there where I could go in there with that app and I could go, boom, you know, fall army worm or whatever it might be, corn earworm, that can help me determine, you know, how I control it, whether I need to control it, and how I move forward with that. Questions? I'm out of time. That was rapid fire, let me tell you. Any more questions for Jeff?